This is how I live, I live. This is what I love uh, This is all the things that my dreams have been made of Welcome to my life This is what I love This is what the soundtrack to my life is made of Music love life Crystal Jordan, be honest in myself, Kevin Davis. We are Music Love Life. And welcome to yet another episode. Let's go ahead and get into it, y'all. <laughs> that was so that sounded so great. Was that theatrical, was, dramatic. Yet another episode. <laughs> yet another. Another one. Another. Get your zebra. Oh, God. Don't. What? Do not. No, I'm sorry. Please, please. I, I, you know, I, I've he, been can't, he can't let go of it. He because has I, like zebra dreams because I've been looking for it and no one else. No Who one else, else were you going? Let me the ask. The only person is Kevin Hart with the joke. I'm telling you, he secretly, he subconsciously. Kevin Hart said that. that. Yeah, he was like, he's talking. It's a joke. We'll play the clip next. We'll play the clip later. And he and it's, uh, a, it's a zebra. I don't you, know. I don't know about the zebra joke. So yeah, you thought that Kevin Hart was the authority on pronunciation? I think he did. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, no, I had no idea. But I'm just saying, Why would let Kevin it go? Hart be the authority on? Because they were asking you. Said you. Zebra. you said and, that's the and way. The it's only really person said. that said that is in a, it's in a dumbass joke in the last comedy special. The king doesn't speak that. I don't, yeah, I don't know about anything about Kevin Hart. I'm I telling would, you, you heard it like even if you were sleeping, and overheard it one night, and then something happened and you heard it, and now you've what would adopted Dave Chappelle it. say? <laughs> Dave Chappelle would probably say, "There's no zebras in." Georgia. What? There's there's no zebra in Are there America. Zebras? Are there zebras right. in America? No, there's no zebra in America either. That's why, so, um, because there are none of that animal <laughs> natively here in America, that's why we don't get the right to say what it is. If it comes from there and they say that's what it is, but then they don't that's say. Them. Okay, so hey, how was your hey. weekend? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. How was your weekend? You did tell him not to start. I did. I did. There. My I weekend did. was uh, was good because this was the I guess the the milestone. This is my last kid going to prom in the house. Aww. So my 18-year-old daughter just went to prom yesterday, and it's the last one. She's a senior, so we only have like a month left of school, and nice. huh, I'm about to tear up now just thinking about Aww. it. No, 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 happy tears. Oh, right. <laughs> happy tears. Tear, tear. <laughs> Cause That's we about to be really naked nice. all the time in the house. Once we once we get that last one out, People we're naked. People always say that. <laughs> no, no, we're, and I don't think they are. We practice it when they. And leave. This is a countdown to naked because you're not naked. She ain't gone yet. She just went to prom. I'm telling now. you, mine. She didn't get an apartment. Mine left. My daughter left, and then she came back. Yeah, and now she's back. Okay, for like for good. No, no, oh no, 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 not for good. But she came back to finish. She changed her major. Now she's very happy. Okay. Well, she really just uses. The home as a place to keep her things and so she's hardly ever there. She's never there. So I don't still, even know if she good. sleeps. She, she, she should have time. a life. No, but then she she's can still show up out of the blue. So at the point that you get naked, she's gonna like open the door and be like, "Mom." Nah, so you gotta catch her off guard one time, just be naked, and she's like, "You know no, what I'm saying?" I don't do but wait till she's with a friend. I, I guarantee she'll never do, do it that. again. No, See, you know what? Because I was I was having a a conversation with somebody else with instead of you like you know how when your kids get older you want to get a bigger house and get them their own room and stuff mm -hmm. instead of doing that just build them like an apartment in the backyard or something you know like one of those how uh, much does that cost I, I, <laughs> it's got to be cheaper than it's, what it's got to be cheaper than buying a whole nother house oh yeah no. uh, apartment I, in the back I don't know, but I'm trying to get my mom to do like here. a really nice uh, clubhouse. In Law Suite? What are you it, doing? Clubhouse. Yeah, exactly. Clubhouse. Well, so you finally needs... get rid of your kids. You want to bring your mom in to, to spoil, bring to my, cock I mean, block? But, but a lot of people have to take care of their parents. I know, but cock blocking is, a, is bad, man. You Carly be... Red was talking about that. Yeah, Taking care of her parents. Yeah, talk, uh, on the show. Yeah. But my mom is by herself. She's not in a relationship, and I don't want her to be by herself. So I don't need her in the home, mm -hmm. but I would like you to have like... Yeah, like if there was like a smaller house on the property or maybe around the corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That way I could get to her if something happens and, you know. Right. But not in the home. So you can no. still maintain your a level of privacy. A level of naked. But yeah. You can get along. Yeah. And, and that way if you need, doing. right, if I need to come and see you, I can put eyes right. on you and then I can go back. I don't know. I just think the naked is overrated. Really? I think it is. So you like clothes all the time. Well, I, you I know thought what? With, I assume that women, as soon as they get home, the first thing they do is take off their bra. 
I don't. I like my bra. Okay. My bra is my friend. But I think, like, if I'm home by myself, that's the funny thing. When my kids went to school. If I'm in the house by myself and my boyfriend's not there, then I'll just walk around naked. Yeah. But if he's there, then I'll put on clothes. <laughs> are you already shutting it down? Like, God dang. Yeah, I guess I don't you, know. It's just you a get feeling in the, of, in the wool pants It's suit a too. feeling of, like, freedom. And I may, like, turn on music and dance around and be loud. And then when someone comes in the house, it's like, oh, there's someone There's someone watching me. <laughs> so I have to put clothes on. It's so weird. But that's I've always been like that. I feel you. Yeah, you can't just be like, I mean, it's some crazy stuff that happens when no one's there but me. Oh, I mean, you're already, you're already here first. Hell, I'm doing. I'm I'm naked. I'm swinging. I'm chilling. I'm doing my thing. There you go. All righty. <laughs> hey, that's what you're supposed to do. Ain't nobody else home. I said it first. I think that that's. I what think my body needs. I'm a naturalist anyway. You no know? state. I'm, I'm, your body needs oxygen. Before women bit Sometimes that, clothes bit off that damn restricted. tree. We, oh, now you right. believe. We were all <laughs> naked. <laughs> we were all naked to them women's. Well, I don't think everyone needs to be naked. Why? Oh, come on. I don't think is, it, is this that everyone doesn't look good naked speech? Is it, that what's about is. to happen? It I've is. been to a new beach before, and I, I don't think people pay as much of attention to it as to you the body, think they do. Look, the bodies, the bodies. Have you ever been to a, like a new beach or anything like that? I've been to a new beach. I didn't go out. I looked out of my hotel window. People were just chilling. Them. Nobody was like, yeah. it wasn't a big deal, yeah. right? And, yeah, and I also have gone to like, you know, women, there are spas. Like when I was... 25, I went on a birthday trip to Hot Springs, Arkansas, the, the, like on a whim. And there, there's hot a... It, it was. So these, there's these hot... They're uh, bathhouses where people are just walking around naked and they come in and there's supposed to be this water that has like properties that can heal and revitalize your, your skin. Right. So they, you get in the bath and they pour this water on you and you drink the water and someone comes and bathes you. But there were all these naked people... And I was very disgusted with Mostly their Mostly older white people? Mostly older white yeah. people. And they were totally comfortable and not... And I was just like, oh my... Like, oh my God. Like, sometimes you don't even know a body can do that. What do you mean? Like, wrinkle and fold oh. come into itself. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. It's a lot of different things can happen to a body through I think the more you see time. naked people, the more you understand that you really are what you eat. Like, people are shaped like burgers. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe because there's some people that eat burgers and are shaped like trees. I, I mean, I, I think I'd rather be shaped like a burger than a broccoli, a broccoli leaf. Yeah, but I mean, some people there are some people that eat badly, but their metabolism is just fast and their bodies don't look bad. I think it's I don't know. It's the luck of the draw. I think the oh, man. It's the luck of the draw. I actually cannot wait. Until me and Kevin meet again on the other side, right? <laughs> and we get to we get to have that conversation about man. Now you know that was some bullshit, right? All that <laughs> vegan stuff. Come on, man. Ain't no vegans in in third world countries. They're not. But I, hate, then, to, I hate to think they frying fish in heaven, though. They are though. I There's a cookout think, right not, now. But the thing frying, about it though, they're people. Not vegetables. You're like you can't have high <laughs> blood pressure in heaven. What you the know, but, I mean, you but don't have blood pressure. People, no. But look how many people f- that are older that live to be a hundred, a hundred. They weren't vegan. Nope. They were smoking and. Drinking whiskey, living wild. yeah, living living hard, <laughs> right? And I mean, I, I don't know. Not I'm sure the food is different now, but I don't know. A lot of it is just it's just propaganda. But I, I do I do think this. There is an uh, People magazine did like 50 be- most beautiful people, but they did a special um, article, and there are they did pictures of the ladies from the Real Housewives without makeup. And I actually Ooh. just saw a picture of Beyonce without makeup as she was getting ready for Coachella. And and can I say to my ladies out there, I don't like going without makeup. A lot of times I do here because I'm tired usually. It's the end of the... And, and, but I don't like doing it. But those women look so much more beautiful without all those, all yeah. that makeup and lashes. And I finally understand how guys are saying like, Natural is better. So Epiphany? I, I, I did. I had what? a picture because they looked so like younger, more soft. Just it, it's just amazing. What? So if you, I'm admitting. I think that the problem also is that a lot of people have started overdoing makeup. Right, 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 right. So I think a little bit of makeup, but I think that the way that the the trend now with the contouring and the lashes and the you know, the over, under eye, like it's too much. And I think that when you strip back the makeup, there's a picture of Portia. She looks adorable. She's a beautiful woman anyway, but she looks absolutely adorable. Nene looks so much softer and so much prettier. Kenya looks, I mean, they really look so much better. It's amazing. Cynthia looks even younger. 
Um, yeah. and, and it's just, it's amazing that, you know, the, what, how the trend is now is for women to almost like, Create something else. <laughs> I, I was kind of ahead of my time because I've never worn makeup. But you know what? That from from like my yeah. sisters and I see them going on YouTube and they watch all these makeup tutorials mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. Which I mean, that's cool if that's what you into and that's what you want to do. But at the same time, they're like I'm learning that women are learning how to do makeup from gay men. So Not they end the up, women end up looking or making themselves up yeah. like gay men. But not all the time. I do think that's true. And I think I've said that, like, I don't want to look like... A drag queen a drag or queen. I don't know what, yeah. <laughs> when I have on makeup. And that is kind of the look. But I think that the the men that were that were gay, that are that they were imitating women that were in the theater. And, you know, theatrical makeup is very different. Because you're under a lot of lights and you're far away, right? So you have on. It has to be, but yes, but it it is not necessary for HD television. You know, you look at Love and Hip Hop, and it's like, who are you, (laughs) ma'am, sir, what? But when you see the pictures of the women, I just wanted to say that, and and I definitely um, those women, the women are beautiful anyway. But they're so much. You should post those on. Yeah, they're so much more beautiful. I wish I wish women would kind of embrace that. I see that Alicia Keys is is continuing to wear no makeup and there was a lot of backlash against it when she first started and I thought she was going to start wearing makeup again but she's still not and I wish that more people would I don't know about not wearing any makeup but just so much cuz it really does oh, take pull away back from a little bit. Yeah. yeah, from how pretty you are. Well, I think it's I mean it's, it's like on a special occasion for mm-hmm. a certain event you know what I mean? You I want to present a certain look. That's look one like. thing. But there's some people that won't go to the mailbox yeah. without a face full of makeup. Yeah. Looking like a geisha. Yeah. They do. Nobody wants to. But I mean, it, guys it, seem to like it. But I just I just wanted to say kudos to the ladies, the Real Housewives. And, um, and for know. the women that look completely different to where you're pretty after makeup and not before, <laughs> you probably got to keep doing it. Okay. Well, I think that everyone is beautiful and has no. Beauty everyone's in not no. beautiful. No. No. Everyone has something beautiful about it. Them. Sounds no. nice. No. Everybody, everybody has something beautiful about them. One, everyone. I think everyone has inner beauty. No, but no. but there's a lot of outer ugly though. There is a lot of outer oh, ugly. You. But okay, oh, you. outer ugly. We got to talk about Beyonce. She took over. She took over the internet. It actually, was yesterday. It was it was yesterday, last, last night, night. Yeah. early in the early in the wee hours of the morning. Once again, she broke the internet. Um, obviously, she's the greatest entertainer on the earth at this point. I think she's Michael Jackson. She's right Hands now. Down. Me right she's now. Michael she Jackson. pisses excellence. Well, I mean, Janet. Okay, if we're gonna talk about women, no. Janet was was bad on her performance Not like too. This. Not the like same that way. velvet no. rope stuff. I don't think so. Not no. the same. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm a crazy. Janet fan. Don't. Velvet Try Rope, me Velvet Rope Janet performance was not has nothing spectacular. On this where it'd be like clowns and a whole circus comes nothing out and performs. Nothing on this. You don't understand what happened. Did you see it? I saw a little bit of it. I mean, I wasn't. You there. didn't see all of it. I mean, did you see the link I sent you? I saw all yeah. of it. I saw every link that there was. Right. Well, the marching band and everybody. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it was, was a whole thing. It was Destiny. She brought back out Destiny's child. Yeah, but, her and her but sister Janet dance. wasn't part of a group to bring out. So come on, it wasn't. Let, like, her, let it go. Janet. Let, Janet's not going to be able to hold up I against Janet. Is better as a better performer than no, than not Beyonce. at all. That's Beyonce foolish. is dope. She's one of the best ever. Oh, she's Michael Jackson. Mm. Okay. No, she's not Michael Jackson. She is Michael Jackson. No, Michael Jackson is still a better dancer. Nah. And a better singer. Yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. Michael Jackson. No. Okay, I'm Michael gonna Jackson's say something. Michael no. Jackson. No. 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 Michael Jackson is Michael Jackson, but Beyonce, his spirit has gone into Beyonce. Yeah, that's what's happened. I do not agree. <laughs> I mean, she's not. I don't know. Better. I don't know how to hard. No, no. Beyonce, to, Beyonce, will, with force. <laughs> Beyonce will be better than Michael Jackson in uh, regards that when she leaves this earth, she'll still have control of our masters. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about right now. Everything else is still Mike. Sorry, no, no it's I still think, Mike. I think she got him. I think mm. she got. I think she's equal. What for? What reason? Though, give us some reason. And, and she's Just, literally chasing a ghost. So. You know, there's that. Well, give me she, give me some reasons. Though, okay, why you I, think. okay. First of all, her impact on the world, her impact is unchallenged. Like I don't think any other artist can can be relevant across the globe like that. 
Like that's a big deal to be relevant in Italy and Germany and everybody is enjoying this. And the fact that, can I say, she did this performance, which was even more black power driven than her Super Bowl performance, which was she had on the actual, she did the Black Panther thing. This time she brought the HBCU, like it was still in the same spirit of black power. And she made that relevant across the world. Like that's huge. And she's flawless when it comes to dancing, flawless when it comes to singing. The performances are ridiculous. She looks amazing. Like I can't find, there is not one flaw. I don't think she looked that good. I mean, don't get me wrong. She I looks hold amazing. Beyonce, clearly I'm in the beehive. I hold Beyonce in high regard. I just ain't never she seen a She changed her nail polish with each performance. What? Yes. Do you understand that? She changed her. Her nail polish, like I don't know how it was done. I don't want to know. How many I just people noticed that? Magic. Who noticed that? I, I never, I never known of a somebody to right. give credit to someone who changes their nail polish really quickly. With every, with every scene, that's that bitch got a full set in between the songs. <laughs> that's immaculate. Do you understand? That's immaculate. <laughs> that that is unbelievable. Set. We've never seen her flaw, flaw nothing. She falls down steps all the time. Her vocals are... <laughs> no, she's not. She does fall oh, down steps all the time. That was one terrible. Time. <laughs> that was one time, okay? I, I, I will tell you that her, her performances are very nice. And her vocals are strong when they're when they're actually being sung by her. Yeah, but I think, but, but which is not all the time. But she, but it's a lot of the time. Mm. It's a lot of the times because she does Toss runs up. to prove it. Toss up. She does runs to prove you it. You can record runs live on Pro Tools before you even go on the stage and then make it look like it's live. Yeah, I don't think she's doing. It's a that, toss though. up. It's a toss. She, she dances way too hard to sing those some of those songs. Right, I agree with that. See, it's a I toss agree up. with that. But she, but her energy. She didn't. Level, her body didn't look a little funny. No. I thought her body looked amazing. Mm-hmm. Really, in the jean, little, the little jean shorts or whatever, it didn't look like she, she had a number of costumes. She, she had on. Too. It didn't look like she was getting kind of ant bodied. It looks like she's starting to get that ant body. Well, that's she also had on those tights that women wear when they're performing that, you know, that are, so it's not really just leg, even though it looks amazing. It's uh-huh. just like tights. They're like super, super tight tights that hold you in and are good for dancing. Yeah, stuff okay. to squeeze in yeah. and, hold, and lift you up and all that. I, you know? I mean, she's, yeah. I, her body looked amazing. She has. I think three. right now she's the best. She is the best, hands down. I think if it was her, and Michael Jackson, she put up. She gave him a hell of a challenge. I don't know. I've never seen anybody almost die when when she walked on stage and like you know what I'm saying grown, I, grown I ass that, men I are think crying. That people, I think. Oh my God, people. No, are not crying. gay dudes. I'm talking about normal dudes that have like regular jobs are breaking down and passing out and fainting. Are, I think there, there were so know. many people. See, that was the Michael, that was the MJ effect. Did like, exactly. People. Did grown ass man would just faint like Benny Hinn touched him with that, that right. spirit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Michael Jackson <laughs> was, Jack. had the Benny Hinn power. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but are you real though? The whole <laughs> like, is in, in real life though, I've never seen anybody have that never. type of effect I think that, on I think that she does. I think that she does. I don't think that Beyonce could get away with touching little boys' booty holes and still be like on top. I don't. I don't like that you always go to a distasteful place. I don't care. But think That's about that for a second. Think about that for a second. Michael Jackson could touch a little boy's booty hole and then make another. But we don't man. know that he did that. We don't In fact, know that. We don't believe that he did. That. But I don't the, think but he the did public. That. I don't believe he did. I don't that. think he did either. But public perception so stop was it. no, he did that no, shit. no. Listen, <laughs> he did not. I don't think he did that shit. Here's here. I don't think he did either. He but did. here's the point. Public perception said that he did. Yet and still, he'll go to a concert and motherfuckers will pass out. But that's what? because he's a man. That's no, the difference between no, it's because being a woman. Lots of men do performances. What I'm saying is, what was the one that he was doing at, at this, this the end or whatever? What was the name of the the tour that they they made the movie about it? This is it. This, this is it. it. Yeah. If that if that tour had made it. Man, you know what I'm saying? It would have been ridiculous. Yeah, he, he's true. he's amazing. I'm not when true. He, when he's telling you this is my last one, and then he goes out on the road, and he actually had to go out on the road on that one, true. it was going to be ridiculous. Yeah. Beyonce doesn't have that kind of weight. I'm sorry. Yeah, She's she a, you're going to make me go watch This Is It now. It's a good movie. Yes, yeah, she does. when it, it came out in the theaters, I was like, oh. yes, that's what even when Michael Jackson died, man, we that's were all like, what I'm saying. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. I, Beyonce, that, Beyonce has to say, I'm telling you, you're at a different place in life. No. Yes. Beyonce could not fondle nobody's little kid. I'm not and, talking about fondling because I don't believe that Michael did that. It doesn't matter if, he, if you think he did it. Public perception was that he did. And you know that. That's why there are so many jokes Public about it. Public perception is that 
R. Kelly peed on a girl and continues raping people, but he still keeps it, selling that music. That wasn't public perception. That was videotape. <laughs> I saw that shit. That's true. He keeps selling music, so I'm Beyonce just saying is this dope. doesn't matter. I'm not taking away from her, but I'm just saying, no, Michael Jackson, you she, went too okay, far. Okay, so you're going to give her this, she's the best of this time. Yes, absolutely. The last 20 years. What year is it? <laughs> 20 years? Two thousand. So about 2000? Yeah. Uh, Quite, Actually, quite well, possibly, yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, the only, the only person close to her something. is Janet. Let me say something. Janet's not even close. I saw. I don't agree with that. Liza Minnelli do a Beyonce uh, skit, Beyonce routine. Right. Do you know how amazing that Liza Minnelli did? If if you wanted to put put a ring on it, mm-hmm. how much does um, Beyonce get a ticket? I don't know, but I know that they want five hundred dollars for this on the run tour, and with that. For Coachella, one ticket, for and you one got ticket. them right. That's they're going to get it. And That's not this, a set. <laughs> with this Coachella, they're going to definitely get it. So you got to spend a thousand dollars to take your date. To take your date. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. She got to go by herself, I guess. Yeah, a lot of guys that last time they were like, I can't afford to go with you, but I'll send you to see <laughs> Beyonce and Jay Z. Who is that? Um, Barbara Streisand though was was. Um, Barbara Streisand sings Beyonce songs. Yeah, she. That's she, amazing. And she pulls them. I don't know how. It's something so boring to me, but she pulls them. Yeah, but you know Barbara what? Streisand's at at, an icon. at this point, hell. Barbara Streisand needs Beyonce to feel relevant. Yeah, nobody's and, and she's her. still a legend. Don't get me wrong; she's still a legend in her own. Are you saying that right. about Liza Minnelli too? Yeah, because the kids don't so. give a shit who they, they don't, don't even know so. who Liza Minnelli is. They but don't know don't, who Barbara Streisand is. I don't think that they is. would come down for anyone else. Like, who else would they do that for? She's cool with everybody. She she said. Thank y'all for making me the first woman to head Coachella. Ain't that a bitch? And then Michelle Obama will tell her daughters to be like her. She flex like she, she has. There's n- oh, she's got some. She's no no some big way, balls to yeah, flex. No yeah. one can get with her. Like I'm I'm not saying that you know she just is that that Michael Jackson type persona. When they declassify the mind control slave experiments they've been running on Jay Z and Beyonce, <laughs> and we find out she's really a puppet, <laughs> that's when that's that's when you'll know why it all happened. Yeah, I mean, I, hey, <laughs> hey, I'm just kidding. I have no idea if she's a mind I, control I slave. I also saw the um, <laughs> the interview you that Jay Z. You know, be on your I know, ass too. but I have no idea. I'm just joking. I saw the interview Jay Z did with David Letterman. I haven't seen that yet. I'm it's be, awesome. I, I keep meaning to watch it. Though. Yeah, I think I told you guys to watch it. Yeah. It was very good. Um, first of all, David Letterman's awesome. I've always been a big fan of his. I liked him a lot better than Larry King. Like, yeah. He was always like my favorite. Um, the show is dope, you know, because I've watched him do other. And he did Obama he did first. Obama, I saw that. And mm. then he's done, uh, I can't think of this lady's name. But, but, to she roll, was like a, like, but you know what? That's significant to me, though, because as I, I think David Letterman is legendary. He is. Right? Yes. And for him to have retired from uh, from his show and then and now doing this thing, the first two interviews that he does is Barack Obama and Jay-Z. These people are America's royalty, quite honestly. Black is the new black. Yeah. But yeah. I, Finally, I mean, black uh, is black now. Not yet, because I'm not going to do it. Keep letting critters in. What are you talking about? Who? The critters. <laughs> Who are critters? I, I'm not throwing back to the last week. There you go. Just leave it alone. Nah. We got to talk about Come on, Cletus. What do we need to talk about? <laughs> like, what about last week? Come on. Well, I did get a couple. I got a couple emails. Um, and I think I think you may have gotten one, too, just about us being insensitive with domestic violence. I did not get an email about that. I did. So okay. I I wanted to say... That because I know I kind of checked out. We were just because I didn't really like the way the conversation was going. But I do know that both of you guys take domestic violence very seriously. We talked right. a little bit about Fabulous and his the case against him. We don't. All those things are alleged. That seems to have disappeared. <laughs> that whole conversation about him has gone away. Re- really, everything is so quick nowadays. But I didn't. I don't want anyone out there to think that our show doesn't take domestic violence seriously. I myself grew up, you know, with a parent that experienced domestic violence, um, and it is something serious. Sometimes we discuss things and they become funny for entertainment or just to make light of something that's very serious and hurtful. But I don't want anyone out there to think that we, you know, take don't take domestic violence seriously. And I'm sure you all will back me up with that so that the audience will, it will be believable. 
Jump in here, Kevin. B? <laughs> really? But I don't want to steal your moment. Yeah, this is your moment. It's not a moment. I don't even because I think you, it you was grew obvious. Up in a household, I took it, and yeah, you you know, hey. I mean, my parents, my my parents experienced domestic violence too. So Both I, I of definitely them? yes. So and and they were young too. My parents had me when they were seventeen. So I grew up with them and experienced a lot of. I saw a lot Between of what they them. saw. Okay, I thought you right? were saying it was done to both your parents individually. It's like that's different. And I've experienced domestic violence. So I mean, you know, it's closer than you witnessing it. I've been a victim. So right. But I mean, you know, I don't. I, I don't know that I felt like we were making fun of it. If I, if someone did feel that way, that wasn't the intention. Right. I will say this though. I think in in terms of healing, you have to get to a point where, and and it takes a certain, I don't know, a, a certain, uh, uh, if I want to say, uh, braveness or whatever. But it, it, you have to get to a point in in terms of your sense of humor where you can laugh about. You, do, you have to heal before you can do that. But I mean, different people are different because I know I people I know friends that. They'll laugh about something to keep from being really upset, mm-hmm. and that's their way of coping with it. But that can make someone else feel like you're not taking it seriously. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had a friend that, right. you know, I told them about having cancer, and they just they made a joke, and I was like, and they were like, I just, you know, it's difficult for me to have that type of conversation, right. so it's easier if I lighten the mood. You know what I mean? So, um, and you never know where someone is with it. Like sometimes the jokes can be too soon. Yeah. You know I what I mean? I think saying that she might have had soft teeth may have been too soon. Um, but, you know. Well, but, I mean, I actually know somebody who had soft teeth and had to get a, a bridge. So, like, that was something <laughs> That was something from reality. It wasn't like I was just, you know, what's the funniest soft thing I teeth? can say? Yeah, you know, soft gums is what I said, I think. No, you said soft teeth. Did you catch those eye daggers? You just, you just got stabbed. I don't, I don't, I don't care but about that. But teeth have roots on them, right? They do. So... It have to be some pretty mushy gums. I mean, you know, they. I happens. wonder. I wonder how long it was, or if at all, if if Tina Turner was able to laugh about domestic violence jokes. I don't know. Because when she, she went through her funny. stuff, and I'm sure she saw uh, the film and all that. Well, she was she a was, part of making the film, and I think right. it probably took her a, took her some time before she would even be able to share that story. You know, because that was mm-hmm. years after. It had happened. She was happy and living in a whole nother country. You know what I mean? So it probably took some time for her to be able to share. Because I, I imagine, like, when, especially when something is close to home, you might be like, all right, that one, that one joke was funny. Right. But right. overall, because yeah. we laugh at the joke, but the situation itself may not be a funny situation. Well, but people make fun of that movie all the time. Like, yeah. I remember having to get up and walk out of the theater the first time I saw it. But the whole eat the cake anime, people make jokes about that. You walked that. out of What's Love Got to Do With It? I did. It was really hard for me to see oh. because of what I had experienced. So, um, but, but that was when it was in the movie theater. I remember yeah, being I in the movie theater and having to get out. Walk out. So what, it just took you to a place where you started remembering like things from you. You like started seeing flashes or something? Up, yeah. Wow. Never felt that sensitive about anything? Never related to anything on such a real level? Um, I, I I tend to not take things so personally. And I'm not saying that you're uh, you know bad for doing that. Oh, but no, I, I'm not. I tend to not take things that personally. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's in a certain place in their life. Everybody's doing a certain thing. I don't, I don't, I don't know that I can see my exact situation in anybody else's situation. That's a good place. But you know what? Hell, when um and y'all kind of joked at me about uh shedding some tears after watching Birth of a Nation. Right. But yeah. And that I, was no, no, I, 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 I literally was... I saw myself like, okay, if my wife had been raped. <laughs> And I, I was yeah, in I mean, it. Everybody sees I stuff it. different. Yeah. You know what I mean? When different. you put yourself in those shoes. Yeah. yeah, no, it definitely wasn't the fact that you were crying. I think it was that you were crying on Facebook. Right. You know, that's, I thought it was that. in front of a shed. I really yeah, did. I don't remember the shed. I, I thought it was you in front like of a shed. Because I felt like it was almost he was like barefoot. he was out in the slave quarters. He, like He had big cuffs in his pants. Yeah. But I, <laughs> that movie was hard. I I couldn't watch. I didn't sit through Birth of a Nation. You didn't eat no. that one either? No. Wow. I didn't. At the point that we're doing the, we're extracting the teeth. I was out. What movies have you cried on? I cry on most movies. On, on most movies, really? <laughs> Did you cry like Boys in the Hood? Like I didn't cry on Boys in the Hood. 
No, I didn't cry on Boys in the Hood. Yeah. I was really I was like, sad. Get I was Ricky very ass. sad they to see. Get Rick. Damn it, they got him. Morris Chestnut go. I mean, could it not have been one of the other characters that hey. was less attractive? That was what was horrible to us, you know. Us, as in women watching the uh, film. Like, Come I on, cried. really? I cried. Like, I cried during Passion of the Christ. I didn't, but you know what? I, I had a, I had a mentor um, who was Jewish who thought it was horrible that I would even go see that movie. So, I mean, different things affect different people differently. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I do, I'm sensitive and I, and I relate stories and messages to my own experience Here's or experiences one. near me. Here's a good one. I cried during John Q. Yes, I did. did Man, when that, little, that, when that little boy came from so under the barrier yeah. and did the... Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't. But even, no, I see, couldn't I cried it. when he was like, he's... He's telling the doctor that you're going to save my son. He's like, he's like, um, he said, your son's, he said, my son's not going to die. I reject that. And he just was, and you could see like the. I think I may be a sociopath. I didn't cry. <laughs> I didn't cry into this shit. Right, 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 right. You guys are like, y'all are caught up and like you're walking in the theaters. This dude's on Facebook live crying to the world. Ah, mm. Eh. Mm. Yeah. You just. We have yeah, a heart he, of stone. He does. I don't know. No, man, we he, talked about the no, students. No, he's cried because he's, what, what, was, what was Saving Private Ryan or some shit? You've cried no, on something. No, no, I cried on a, y'all are going to think it's ridiculous. Gonna admit it. no, no, you, you beige, man. You've cried on something. I'm you beige with curly hair. I know you've cried. Okay. I know you've cried. He's trying to prove that he's was the it, realist. Was it? Mm. Brian McKnight, when Brian <laughs> McKnight's funeral, I know he's going to shed a single tear. <laughs> Brian McKnight's music was all about crying. Oh, right. Right. He had one last cry. We the light skinned people stopped crying. That was it. That was the He's one last like, one. See, this is how I further know. <laughs> That's the last one. That's how I further know. He, be honest, has a wall up, ladies and gentlemen. He does. He has a wall. He has a wall. I was gonna tell you a movie I cried on, but you, y'all kept. I it hear. was so funny. Y'all kept going. I was hilarious. Keep keep going. No, come, come I wanna on. I want to laugh. No, okay. So the. The, the last time I can remember crying in a movie, and this is going to be awful because you're going to be like, what? I already know. It's going to prove yourself. It's going to be, it's gonna be very light skinned, isn't it? No. No, no it's no. probably going to be foolish. No, it's not foolish at all, but the movie, you're going to be like, what? Nobody's going to get this one. You cried on Soul Plane? I did not. That would be, let that'd just, be worse. Just let him get it out. Okay, so the scene is. <laughs> This guy, the whole movie, he's going through this, this issue where he's, you know what I'm saying? He's running from the cops, he's running from gang members and stuff. He ends up having to let his he, throughout the movie. You recognize that he's a he's a, a really good dad, and he loses his son at one part of the of the movie to like some gangsters. They kidnap him or whatever. He gets his son back finally, and he he lets he lets the girl that he's kind of just met or whatever on a, just a whim. He's like, the police gonna get me, so I have he has to let his son go with this woman. She takes the son down to Mexico, but I mean it's like a woman he doesn't even really know, right? <laughs> Hold on. So at the end of the movie, he does get away from the cops. It's like a miraculous how he gets away from the cops, and um, he comes down on, on the beach, and the 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 girl that he let his son go with and his son are playing on the beach. She's like got him in school. It's obvious she's taking good care of him, even though the 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 idea was that he. He wouldn't. She wouldn't. He comes across the beach and the, the son and the dad reconnect. And it's like, you know, it's a dad son moment. And I thought that was, you know, I, I shed a tear on that one. What is the name of that movie? Waist Deep with Tyrese. Because I was going to say, if you're talking about the Tyrese Megan Good movie, yes. I have clocked out. Why? I'm, that was a beautiful I'm moment. I'm that out. was a beautiful moment. His, he, had, he had to let his son go with some I'm skank. Looking at, I'm looking at Kevin like, is this Negro he, talking about what? He, he had, about, about, about to text me real quick. I, he, yeah, had his, he, let it, he had to let his son go. <laughs> he had to let his son go with a skank. And he was like, oh my God, but this is my only option. If I don't let my son go with her, I lose everything. So Speaking he had, of crying, Tyrese is sitting at home like, of, see, <laughs> I knew I sold that scene. <laughs> Somebody felt me. Somebody felt me. That was a beautiful Speaking scene. Speaking of crying, no. We're not going to give me any credit for that? That was a beautiful scene, no? Yeah, yeah, everybody cried during that. You, okay, good. Yeah, Nobody cried during Waist Deep. The acting no, was horrible. No one. I didn't say anything about the acting. I'm talking about that scene. It was a culmination of events to that scene when he got to re- reunite with his son on the beach. I know. You got to go on through all this. And I was feeling it. I didn't know you expressed so many feelings there. You're telling me everything that's happened. Other than that, sociopath. Oh, my God, man. That's so weird that he chooses to connect with Tyrese and nothing else. See, this is so how someone I know. Else it wasn't, cried, how, yeah. how come we couldn't talk about the little boy? Why did it have to be Tyrese? It's the connection of... Oh, because, the re- Ty- because when you look at those... It was a father and son movie. <laughs> Reunited. Tyrese. Reunited. That's mm-hmm. beautiful. Jeez. A dad and son reuniting against all odds. That's a beautiful... 
beautiful. Yeah, but this dad you know, was trying to save clip. his son from having. I need, I need that clip for social media. We gonna, yeah, <laughs> no, let's, let's, we're gonna put that. This... No, we're gonna put that in the Slack room too. What up to everybody in Slack? With, with but, John yeah. Q, Denzel was <laughs> trying to save his son from dying, but he was still playing the same. I know. I thought that was way more. Real. I know. He's trying. He's like getting a heart <laughs> he for his out, son. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, and you're talking about that's no. nothing compared to Tyrese and Megan Good. Nothing. Get out of here. Megan Good and I Tyrese you out. should have won I want uh, you awards out. for that. I want you out. They, they should have won awards out. for that. Who wrote that movie? Good job, buddy. Well, it's playing on TV <laughs> One right now. It's playing on TV One. I'm gonna go watch we, it and cry. I want you to. I want you to. Jeez. Other than that, my one last cry was in the like late '80s, and early '90s with Brian Knight. We're done. Kevin, um, <coughs> speaking of crying, <laughs> a lot of people are crying over the situation that happened, or at least upset over the situation that just happened with Starbucks and the two gentlemen that were in there yeah. and, and were arrested. Didn't hear about it. All right, so let me fill you in. <laughs> two black guys were sitting in Starbucks waiting on a third party. Mm-hmm. Happens to be a white guy. Okay. The irony there is just... Mwah. They're black Nonetheless, people meet with white right, people? Right. So I'm not sure if they're related like this is us or, you know, whatever. But two guys, two black guys were sitting there waiting. But they hadn't ordered. They hadn't ordered anything. They didn't get any coffee, any crumpets or whatever. They were just sitting and there. No, no crumpets. <laughs> right. Crumpets was a little, you know, a little soft. No, I mean, yeah. Nonetheless. Okay, so they're just sitting there waiting. The barista says... Those two guys came in here, didn't order anything, and so he called the police. He or she called the police. The barista. The barista. Right. Okay. Right. They called the police. Police came. More police came. More police came. And they actually arrested the two guys for sitting there and not ordering anything. Okay. Right. The guy that they were waiting on, the white guy, shows up. He's like, the hell's what going happened? on? Right. Right. And um, actually, I don't, I don't know what happened at that point. But every, all the other Caucasians in the room were just like, they were doing nothing. They, I, they had no idea why they were being arrested. One lady filmed it, and that film went viral. That's part of the reason it's getting so much attention. Um, but yeah, everyone's like, those guys were sitting there just like everyone else in the room, but they were singled out and arrested. Arrested? They like did, literally She said they did Starbucks. a perp walk. Yeah. Them out of the store. Okay. Then did they, did they remain arrested or did they actually get booked and taken downtown or whatever? Or did they get let go in the car? No, as I understand, they were arrested. And went to jail. Right. Right. Okay. They went to jail. And, ju- and the, the the charge was sitting? Um trespassing. Okay. And what happened when they got there? Did, did you saw in the video, did they did they were they were they, they were not arrested, they were not resistant or allowed no. or anything like that. They were shocked because it seems very I mean, Starbucks is a place that people go hang out. You know right. what I mean? And so so social media started going crazy. The the managers at Star at well Starbucks issued an apology. Okay, um, and said that that's not how Starbucks does business, and they were mm-hmm. not happy. Um, the CEO it, says he wants to meet the gentlemen that were uh, arrested. They were arrested, um, and then some African American. I don't know if we call them leaders, but people with a voice. Ti was one of them. Got online and was like, "No, people should boycott Starbucks." Mm-hmm. Um, my thing is, I don't think that it's Starbucks. I, was, I think it's I that thinking. particular Starbucks. I don't think it's that particular Starbucks. It is that particular Starbucks. No, no, that, that particular Starbucks has to take the burden of blame. No, I, somebody ma'am. has to, because they called the police, they made that. You're talking about that location. That location. That location has to take the burden of, of blame for this. Why? Okay, let me finish what I'm saying. I will. Um, because the police were there based on the complaints that they were told and that's what they were acting on, right? So I think that the police officers and also the the managerial staff that that okayed that call have to take a bur- have to take the blame for that. And that should be who we we ex- hold accountable for that action. I don't think that the corporation Starbucks, especially because they were immediate to 
put out an apology and the CEO made that statement that he wants to meet with them. And they made, they made it very, it was very quick and concise. Like we, we don't, you know, this is not our practices. I think that's the best thing that they could do. And I think they'll probably do more after that. But seeing how fast they responded, um, I think that as a corporation, they shouldn't be held accountable. There were people that said, we want to see those people fired. And I think that there has to be some action taken and the police officers should be, because if people are sitting there peacefully not hurting anyone, why would they be, in Starbucks, why would they be arrested? That stuff kind of happens to black men all the time and everyone wants to think that there's some extenuating circumstances or there had to be something else. They had to have done, no, I don't think there it was happens nothing, all the time. There was no, so I'm not going to say it happens all the time, yeah. like as in every hour of the day, but it happens very often. Two white people too. Two white people. It guys happens too. very often that black people are just my. I remember even me as a teen, we couldn't even hang out in groups of three or more. I remember stores when they, like the little kids stores, no. they're like two kids at a time. Yeah. yeah. It'd be a sign on the door. They, they wrote. Right. Two kids at a time. And don't bring backpacks. You can't have no backpacks. Back Absolutely backpack. not. But no. that's because they they they're responding. I mean, there's a difference between responding to criminal activity that's being right. had and I mean, people when you own a store, I was I was going home one night, actually leaving here late. I shouldn't have I shouldn't go get gas late at night. I've been told that before, but I stopped to get gas it's around 11 o'clock at night. These two guys come in, they're black guys. The owner of the store is black also and has a black daughter that's working. It's a family-owned, it's a very small little gas station. I'm I'm just trying to get some gas and something I probably shouldn't be eating late at night. And I get in the store and the two guys come in after me and the guy says, tells the girl to lock the door. He said, they've been stealing. They're not leaving. I'm like... Fuck me. Let, I, me, let, <laughs> let me get out this bitch. Right. Right. First of all, my off, nigga. Like, whoa. And he was like... And he, he showed them the pictures. They had pictures of the two guys. And so the guys started looking around and I'm like... I just want to get out because I'm thinking, are they going to pull out a gun and there's going to be a standoff in the store? I'm not a racist. No one in that situation was racist. But if that owner had been white and that and that and right. it did that, then people would have been saying that the owner was racist. And this person is just trying to keep his business going, and he's tired of it. He was like, "You guys keep coming in here and stealing." He was on some rogue. I'm going to get you. Did you I'm, get out? I got out. Okay. I was just like, "Please, I just want to get out." And I was like, I'll never do this again. But um, <laughs> I never come late to get a gas station. But my point is, there's a difference between looking out for your business and being an asshole. and being a, and being a racist asshole. And I've been in I've been in stores, especially downtown Atlanta, where there are a lot of people that are homeless that will come in mm-hmm. and panhandle and 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 harass actual customers. Again, we're talking about a situation that if the person is white that says hey, you can't be in here, that's going to be a problem. So that's not what happened here. But what I'm saying is we can't just throw a blanket over everything. That particular establishment, in my opinion, should be held accountable. But to say Starbucks as a whole is responsible, to me, is taking it too Yeah, far. I wasn't saying Starbucks as a whole. I just said that it happens to black men. I would go a step further, Crystal. I, I think that when a police officer is called, he still has judgment over whether or not there's a crime committed. And it's his job to know right. the difference between a crime and not a crime. So even if an idiot that works at Starbucks decided that these people were trespassing and made, made the phone call, it's still up to the police officer who comes, who's trained in this, right. to determine whether or not there's actually a crime committed. And if there's no crime, then in most cases, I would assume that a cop would be like, you know what, hey man, just leave. You know, I'm, I'm going to walk you out. Let's just go out and, you know what I'm saying, y'all go to another another establishment or whatever. There's there I, there's not a crime, but they don't want you here. If they don't want you here, I can't let you stay. Right. So, you know, come on out and, you know, go go somewhere else. You have to leave. That is the responsibility entirely on the police officer, not the person who made the phone call. You may not know that there's not a crime being committed as a citizen, as a civilian. But that but the, the management of the store... I'll, I'll, the I'll give you that. What city the, was the, this? The... Is in Philadelphia? I'm, yeah. Okay, yeah. so Philadelphia is not an unrace, unracist city. Even though they say it's the city of brotherly love, it's not an unracist city. There, there have been incidents there, of, you know, in, mm-hmm. throughout history of, of racial problems. But this is like urban, 
Philadelphia or suburb Philadelphia? I don't know. You I'm willing idea? to bet sur- suburb, suburb Philadelphia because it was a Starbucks filled with white people. And <laughs> the cu- the culture, yeah. well, no. Context clues. Starbucks is pretty much a white. I've, I don't go to Starbucks just to hang out. What's the, I do. the culture of Starbucks, are there a lot of people there who aren't paying? Honestly, sometimes. I mean, yeah. I'll go and get like, okay, I'll go to Starbucks and sometimes I'll do meetings in Starbucks. And I'll go get a hot chocolate, a peppermint hot chocolate is my favorite drink. I'll go get one and I'll sit there for two or three hours. But, but I haven't. Something. Yeah, that's but part of their all, business yeah. model is that they have people just come at will, bring your laptop, your tablet, yeah. whatever, right. connect to the Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. Do, is it, the expectation point, is that you're going to spend some money, correct? But you don't have to. I've gone yeah. and not not had a Starbucks right. and still not been harassed. And I'm, not I'm just weird. looking for the crime. That's what it's I could like Because more, as a police officer, I would like to know that if somebody calls and says I committed a crime, that they would first look and make sure that a crime was actually committed. Right. And if you're saying that the culture right. is but you not know always what? purchasing, well, going to going to a store and not spending money is not a crime. They may make you feel like it in a strip club, right. but it's not a crime. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like have you if you've ever been to a car lot and decided mm, not going to buy that car. Not ready. Right. Not going to do. You ever been to a, a clothing store and decided, hmm, I'm going to try these clothes on, but you know what? I'm not going to get anything today. Yeah, right. people make you feel like you're guilty. They do it all the time, yeah. but that's not a crime. I think Someone restaurants. May, the salespeople may want you to do it, but it's I not. I think a there's crime. a difference in, in restaurants because yeah. a restaurant can't make money if there's not a seat for somebody to sit in. So it's a little bit different. Like imagine if this was a, wait, a weighted table. That server can't make money on that table. But that's she, not the model of Starbucks. I, no, I, I understand. Yeah. But I'm saying the restaurants are a little different because yeah. if there's no seats, right. someone may say, I don't want to eat here yeah. because I need a well, seat. Well, I think so if it's you're a talking different. about a, a restaurant, those are different because people don't tend to go into restaurants and just sit at a seat because you have to be seated. Right. A waiter comes over to you and asks you. But Starbucks is kind of like, to me, it took the place of Barnes & Noble. And when I worked at Barnes & Noble, yeah. people would come in Barnes & Noble. They would look through books. You didn't have to necessarily you buy, buy one. You could read it, yeah. though. You could read the magazines. Yeah. And, and it actually ended up being difficult because a lot of times people would come in there and just read a whole book and leave but it also was like Starbucks it was cre- Barnes and Noble was supposed to be one of those neighborhood places that you could feel comfortable going in and having you know just sitting and enjoying the, the, the ambiance that's what I thought I thought the yeah. culture was very yeah. lax it's like mm-hmm. there's no pressure here yeah. you know there's come no buy something there's no sales people right. coming yeah. up saying come hey, buy something if you want yeah. here's the Wi-Fi yeah. you know it's different than like I've gone to a sports bar where they're like okay if you're you have to order one thing Two drink per hour. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, per hour as long. Cause if, cause, so for me, that would order a three three and some change cent t- hot chocolate for four hours, they wouldn't do that because that doesn't allow them to make their quote on that right. on right. that. Like a comedy place. club as a two yeah, drink minimum. Two drink and, yeah, and, you know, and, and they kind of make stuff. you buy a ticket and then you gotta keep I'm like, look, I don't need that. So from a <laughs> from a from a legal aspect though, Starbucks is private property. Yes. So at any time they have the right to call the police on someone who is there. Mm-hmm. So I agree with that. However, I feel like once the police got there, it was entirely their responsibility to figure out whether it was a crime or not. And if it wasn't a crime, then they should have let the store owner or the the barista or whoever it was that was there know like you're being a dick. Like, you know, not in those words, but I'm going to ask them to leave, but come on. Like you don't call us out here for this bullshit anymore. As a matter of fact, I would have charged them for that. Right. They should if, have been. If my alarm goes off mm-hmm. and there's and it was me doing something dumb, they're gonna charge me twenty five dollars because a cop had to come out here mm-hmm. if it wasn't actually a crime. You know what I'm saying? But and you know what? Because that happens. Th- that actually happens a lot too, where someone is just minding their own business and in. Matter of fact, wouldn't someone else get... uh, Yeah, I saw an article recently where a 14-year-old kid, 14-year-old black kid, missed the bus, missed the school bus, and he didn't have his phone, he didn't know how to find his way to school, but he decided he was going to walk. He went and knocked on someone's door, and that person um, ended up bursting through the door, charged, and shot at the kid. Mm. Huh. Yeah. What kind of kid goes He was to just trying school? to get directions. Oh. Wow. 
It's rough. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, what was what was the girl's name? McBride that got in Michigan that got shot when her car broke down and she went and knocked yeah, on uh, someone's yeah. door nearby. Yeah. Yeah. And like they, they're assuming, oh, you're at my door, so you're an intruder. What? Yeah. Which intruder knocks? I don't. <laughs> well, I think I've never had an intruder knock. I think they would knock to see somebody's home first, and they, you know, if nobody came to the door, they might look in the window, and nobody they saw nobody. You know, I think that's, I think that's a. A I mean, valid that argument. Way. However, damn, you shoot first. Like that's the yeah. first thing you do. Yeah. But I, in this particular case, Starbucks should not be responsible. Not even that particular Starbucks should be responsible. Those police officers are full of shit. And he said it was like how many? It was a, like the, several. It was a, <laughs> several. But that's and you know police what? Hold officers. On. That's what they do. They call and then more come and more come and more come. So nobody had any goddamn sense. Nobody was like, <laughs> you know what? Hey, what what crime no, are we arresting? Police person don't for? have any integrity, man. A Not lot of police, police, police don't have any integrity. Yeah, a lot of police. A lot of police don't have any integrity. I bet that if them, you though. if you knew a police officer. And they were you were talking about this, they would say the same thing I did. That was entirely on the they could have diffused that situation. I hear what you say. But I feel like I'm sorry, I feel like Starbucks, the the people that called, they are it's two separate issues. Yes, definitely the police were wrong. But as Starbucks, corporate Corp, to me, the corporate headquarters of Starbucks should hold that Starbucks accountable because we want our patrons to feel comfortable. And you all went out of your way to right. make someone feel uncomfortable. And that's a problem based on the color of their skin. So I feel like they should be held. Whoever was there when, in management, because yeah. the manager had to sign off on that call, right. they should be held responsible for that. And there should be I need some a reason. type of... They got to give me a good yeah, ass. They, I mean, they, a I don't, good ass. And it's not, or it's not it better because be they were literally sitting miraculous. there... For the Sitting there waiting people, on the other person for, to arrive. For other white people to stand up and say there was nothing happening here and they were outraged, that's a problem. But that's what I'm saying. How in the hell can a police officer walk into that environment that's not volatile? Right. Everybody there saying you're wrong. You're that's wrong. That's definitely and ego. See, you got to get up out of here. Well, you yeah. know what? I wonder. I wonder. In part, is that uh, like policemen's ego, where they say I'm the authority and you listen to me, or else, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, or is that the uh, because you got to keep in mind the police department is also a business, right? Right. And so those. Uh, People in the field, and I want to phrase it that way on purpose, but those people in the field have a certain quota that they have to uh, meet per month in terms of their productivity, uh-huh. right? They got to, because their, their data says that there's X number of crimes being committed per day. Right. right, and their funding says that if they're, or, or even in terms of the jail, you have to have a number of people in this jail in order for you to receive the amount of funding that you're getting. If that right. drops, then something changes. Right, right. Um, so I, I, I feel like that may have been, and I don't know for no sure, way. but I wonder if that was an incentive for the policemen I, that's to a stretch. That's no, because these guys were no, completely to, to, just chilling. To if, throw his judgment to the side and say, eh, this guy wasn't exactly committing a crime, but eh, it you're is, telling me it, in it, Philly, it, that's they, a rough it's one, another though, part of the month. You that's don't think in Philly there are far more closer things <laughs> oh to crime than that to right. choose to, to get? Yeah, and they take the easy stuff. They don't want to fight the hard stuff, no, they don't want I the hard was, crimes. I think that was a case of you're going to get up out of here, you. you you N words are going to get up out of here. And because they <laughs> called and they just, at the point that they get there and the person is like, I'm not doing anything. I shouldn't have to leave, which is what it appeared the guys were, you know, that there was like, why do we have to leave? Why are we putting oh, out? Oh, so they, so they didn't leave. No, they were, they. No, that wasn't, that wasn't it, the case. They did oh, okay. leave. They did yeah. leave. I thought but, you said they I mean, they got but they were arrested. Well, That's I, how they left. Yeah, but I, if, if a cop tells you leave, leave. I don't care. I'm I'm tired of hearing this shit. And about- I don't know what the I don't know what that conversation was. I don't know that they said your your in words or whatever. Right. But that's why I say <laughs> that's why that, I giggle when she said that's, it. But that's why I say that maybe that that officer was already on his last straw. Right. Right. Because he hasn't been bringing in enough callers the last uh, couple have months, and his job's on the line. So his he's wife like cheated on him. His son got straight F's. Right. Whatever it is. But that's the backstory I, I developed in my head. However, I don't know this. I haven't seen it. But she brought up the fact that they didn't immediately get up and leave. If that's the case, then I do give them a little. But no, bit of- if you're saying okay, if I, if that were me, say the three of us are sitting down at Starbucks and we haven't done anything, we haven't right. ordered anything. Some police officers come saying you're going to have to leave. 
I'm not immediately getting up. I'm saying, why do I have to leave? What did, what did, what did we do? We're just right. sitting okay. here. Right. And that's what, what that's what I right. saw. Like, what is what what's So happening? it was like the initial reaction yeah, the and then initial, they got arrested. Like, yeah, like okay. what is going on? They're like, you're gonna you you gotta get up. And then it, then the police are like, no, and they're like, but I haven't done anything wrong. And right. I think that's a natural human reaction. Right, right, right. It's right, like right, when right. you get pulled over, like I got pulled over and I had a seatbelt on. The guy was like, I'm like, what did you pull me over for? He's like, you don't have a seatbelt. I'm like, yes, I did. And he said, No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Like you know, that's not me resisting arrest. That's just me speaking up for my rights, you and, know? Yeah, and see, at that part, this is where my black survival skills <laughs> kick in. So I'm going, question doesn't make sense. What part of town am I in? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I'll figure it out later. Yeah. See, me, right? I'm like, what did I do? I didn't do anything. That's, <laughs> like, that's woman privilege. <laughs> yeah. yeah y'all, y'all get to, well, that doesn't make sense. There's no way. I that. may say one time, Man. yes, I did. If he says, no, you didn't, okay. Where's the paper? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Where is the yes, paper? Yes, sir. Let me get the hell out of here. You're right. Like, I want to get home now, and I'll hey. figure out in court. Yeah, which this especially is, if I got somebody with me, which yeah. this is going to be thrown away. This is going to be thrown out. This is not. They're not going to get. They're not going to get convicted of this crime. Well, no, they're not. But that's. I don't even. I think. I think they're already. They're over it. And Starbucks has issued an apology. Right. Already. Right. Right. But my the point was, should people be boycotting Starbucks? Like no. we have to be smarter with our efforts and. There were people there that did not feel that way. It was that particular Starbucks. It doesn't mean the entire. That's my argument. It's I'm not like mad at people. I'm not, not mad at people for jumping on Starbucks and and at least threatening to boycott. Yeah, people are going to boycott well, I, Starbucks. I think people are going to. No, some Just people like are going to boycott, boycott Starbucks. Yeah, but not enough to where it's going to make sense. Two thousand. Um, I want to say five. 2004 maybe, Starbucks was accused, and not just accused, it was proven that they were undercutting their coffee supplier. Ethiopia, who was at the time giving them a lot of their beans, they uh, figured out some way to, to undercut that whole process and stop using Ethiopia or something. Black folks didn't pro- boycott them then, and that was a real one. Mm-hmm. That was a real issue that Starbucks made a decision and I don't remember all the, the, the gross details, but I remember it had something to do with a dark-skinned yeah. country getting shitted on. Now, that would have been a more reason to play if, you know what if I'm no one said anything, then there wouldn't have been that pressure on uh, Starbucks CEO to apologize and say, I want to shake those men's hands and so, so on and so forth. I think that... I, yeah, think, that I, I, think, I think that social... Um, do I want to say social justice that, that comes from the people themselves? Is powerful and that Social was the way media, that, yeah. that that influences what that could be true. That they like saw I that there's there cool. was something happening and they didn't, they wanted to woo. Let me not get the let me not get the black women up in arms to coming after us and let's just get out of the way. But I still don't think that it's a overall issue. You know what I mean? Just like mm-hmm. there are you know H and M that was a little bit different with the the catalog, but. Yeah, because a lot of people had to approve that. This particular Starbucks made a mistake that cost in the entire Starbucks yeah. conglomerate. I think that that they do have to look more to that particular one, but I'm mm-hmm. still putting all of the blame on the cops. That's ridiculous. No, I'm definitely, uh, Starbucks is going to have to, that particular Starbucks is going to have to take some of that blame from me because if you are a store owner, it is your responsibility to make sure that your patrons feel welcome no matter what who they are. But and the owner have, doesn't know what idiot... The manager. The manager. The manager at that time. And if you... And, okay, if, manager, yeah. The owner, manager, no. yeah, not the owner. Okay. But the manager. And if the manager does not follow that, follow your beliefs and the beliefs of the corporation, they should immediately be fired. First of all, like, where are we in a society where you can't walk around the counter and speak to a person? Why would, you, why would your go-to be called the police? I think they did. I think the person... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah. don't know that. I don't, I don't if know If the that. manager came out and asked him to leave and they didn't see, there's something else now. You see what yeah, I'm saying? But, I don't but think that's what happened. Have, yeah, I but think even, was just, even if that did happen, the manager shouldn't have asked them to leave. Bullshit, this is my story. You don't tell me who I can tell to leave or not. Stop. That's now you're going too far now. No, now I'm not I don't going think that it may be right racially, but I can but tell that's anybody the point. I can tell anyone to leave from that's my property. Racial. So what? I can I have the right to tell somebody I don't want them to be there. That's my it's my property. I have that right. Here's the manager, it's not your property. You work there. You're you're hired you're as, an employee. As the manager, I am the power of attorney when it comes to asking people. Well, then to leave. I would sue your ass because you that, would be racial and fine, wrong. Fine, but if somebody so asked me to, to leave, do. if someone asked me to leave an establishment, I would leave. You wouldn't? I would, but I would fall. I would fall. Like one of my clients was at Spawn Divots and they asked her to leave and they called the police. Why? Why did they ask her to leave though? Because she was sitting at the bar and she hadn't she hadn't bought more, I guess, more drinks wow. or whatever. 
Um, but the way they did it, there were other people there too when they didn't and they weren't asked to leave. So she, you know, put it out on social media that she felt like they were being racist towards her. And I would do the same thing. I right. would I mean it's not I felt like that in Atlantic Station. Which store? American Grill. Okay. Watch out, American Grill. I'll tell you right now, right across from from Old Navy. Yeah, we know. Well, if you're black, go over there. See how? Let me, let me, give me your feedback on what happened. But see, I've, been, I've eaten there before. Me too. I've eaten there quite a few times, and I've never had any trouble. That's my thing. Like, if we just jump on a bandwagon and 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 be upset with the entire establishment, yes, that establishment should be should be held accountable. But a lot of times that person may not know. I've never had a problem when I went there. In fact, Neither. I've had black waiters. Because I remember the last time I was there, after I went to see the movie, I went to see, in fact, the Black uh, Black Panther premiere. And we went to eat after after um, the movie at the American Grill. And didn't have any problem. So there's not, you know, I've been to Houston's in Atlanta thousands of times. Never had a problem. And you know Houston's what I mean? And Houston's was boycotted. And Houston's was boycotted Actually, briefly. I think they're shutting down, too. They are, but I don't know if it's because of that. So, but you guys don't feel like a property owner has the right to tell somebody to leave regardless of their reason? No. Because if I, your reason is racist, that's a problem. No, see, no I, I don't. Well, I think, I think you do have a right to tell someone to leave, right, if it's yours, right? But I think if your reasoning isn't just, then it's in poor taste. And I think that the public that you know, patronizes your business, right. has the opportunity to make a decision on Absolutely. whether or not they're going to continue to Absolutely. patronize your business. Absolutely. What I'm talking business. about are rights. That's all I'm talking about. Does a store owner or the person who's in, who's responsible for owning the store right now because the manager is basically the store owner when the owner's not there. Yeah, because you're responsible for it. It's do yours. they have the, the right to ask someone yeah. to leave? Absolutely, they do. It doesn't matter if it's racial. It doesn't, that's, that's, that's a civil But we're claim. talking about owners. Starbucks, we weren't talking, this ain't no owner. This right, was no, no. A, a worker. Absolutely. Yeah, and, a worker doesn't don't have a right. nothing. Absolutely, but if a, a, person who, a person who works there says, hey, you need to leave, do you have a couple of choices. You can either, one, stay and... Potentially be uh, arrested for trespassing, or you can leave, and you can make it a racial thing if you want to. But that's to me later. First, we have to we have to get past the right first. Do they have the right to ask me to leave? Yes. So Is I guess if, you, if this was back, if you were back in the old days, you would have got up from those uh, from those counters. You would have. Yeah, both would, of us would. No, I would not. You would have got beat across your back. I would have. I would have. I mean, okay. I'd have stayed a little bit longer than you. I'm, I'm just kidding. I, I, <laughs> I just got my milkshake and my my high top. <laughs> I was watching live the other day when Martin and Eddie Murphy went in that um in that diner. White like, only we were, pies. White only pies. But like you don't have the right to that's, do that. No, come on. That's so different, and you know it is. It is not. Because Listen, it's, ma'am. It, it, it's imp- <laughs> it's implicit the reason Ooh, why they were that's sitting a big there. Big word. Well, no, but you know why that you know why they were sitting there. You know the reason of it. That's totally different than you being somewhere and someone not, asking you to leave. It's not. It's not because you know what. That same attitude. If we had allowed, oh well, if they asked me to leave, I'll leave. Even if I don't, I haven't done anything. I'm bullshit, no different bullshit. than anyone else. You leave, and just like me and Kevin, when we're in that car getting stopped, you leave and you handle that shit later. Yes, I'm gonna. Yes, I'm gonna write a letter to the owner. Yes, I'm gonna come up there and see the owner or whoever the other manager is, and we're gonna discuss this situation. But I'm not staying here so that you can. Mess up my evening Or my You know My, my next couple of months on me. me and Kevin uh, Are getting our get ass home. home Exactly Cause like Well let's just be for real Because Atlanta Like in, in Atlanta, The city of Atlanta The core of Atlanta, Atlanta Is proper. primarily black Right Right But outside of it you get too far outside of 285. Not even too far. Very uh-huh. close outside. You uh-huh. damn right. Right. And it's and there a are whole places, nother there are, right. Yeah, there are places in Atlanta. You there. realize, like, you feel like you in Atlanta. When you're in Atlanta, you feel like you're in Atlanta. Chocolate. Yeah, it's black chocolate Hollywood. City. Yeah. Chocolate City. <laughs> right. Black people driving Phantoms and Rolls Royces. This is the shit. Right. And then you get outside of it, you start feeling like, oh, I ain't in Atlanta anymore. I'm in the South. Bubba say what? Yeah, so that's Oops, what I, that's get. that's what I mean, Chris. I think that at some point, though, when somebody asks you to leave, you also have a responsibility to make that decision of whether or not you feel like making this a deal today, right now, or if you just want to go home. I I would just want to get home. And right. yes, I absolutely will say that this is wrong, and it is illegal to kick somebody out because of their race. That's illegal. Mm-hmm. However, at that given time, I can't prove that that's what's happening. So I'm just going to go and fight that battle on the other side. Right. 
Uh, I well, don't I know. think Starbucks is also doing. Well, I think what their response thus far has been good, and it's it's a, a form of damage control because I do think as a corporation, anything that happens at one of their locations, the corporation as a whole can right. be held responsible. That's true. I I think that it was right for them to do that. I hope they will let that that management, the manager and whoever that that them go. I hope they will be disciplined and let go because that was wrong. And I hope the police, you know, nothing's going to happen to those police officers, unfortunately. We already know that. And that's where it should, that, mm-hmm. they should, they should really get punished. That's just, that's nonsense. All those damn cops and nobody had the, 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 did anybody even consider it? Like, I wonder, did anybody even consider, hey, this isn't a crime? I'm fucking crazy. But you know what? I'm, the fact that more and more cops like I wonder how that went out on the radio. I'm I'm sure it just said blackmail, whatever, da da da, and they gave the address. And then like two cops were there, and then four, and then even when you look at the video, it's like six, seven, eight. There's but they all do sorts that of- though. They they do that. With, I'm I'm when I was literally, I think I told you guys a story when I had a headlight on my car that they said I I shouldn't have had a, a license plate with my alma mater on it. Two police officers pulled me over, and then eight. I mean, two more and then two more. And I'm like, I'm a woman by myself at night. What? what why do we need eight cops? But that, I think that's also, that in, that form of intimidation mm-hmm. is, I think that's... It is. It is very... Not un, it in is, good taste. It is not in good taste. And it also, it, it makes a person, it puts a person at a disadvantage to where they do think, to, mm-hmm. to, do I need to run? I mean, I'm, I'm outnumbered. I mean, I'm, I, it, it can make you... It's just you and 10 yeah, of them. Yeah, right. and they're very rude. I mean, they can be. Not all cops are, but there are officers that definitely misuse that uniform and that, that mm-hmm. power, and they use that to intimidate. And when a person, you know, is thinking, my back is against the wall, I'm, they can kill me and nothing's going to happen to them, that's got to be a horrible way to... You know, pl- place to be, and so yeah. you can't blame someone for trying to run or even for being defensive. You know what I mean? So it's it's we really need to figure out how to change that. But yeah, I remember I've heard friends that have been pulled over because they fit a description. They have no proof, and there are eight to ten cops, and they ha- get out the car. You know, with with guns drawn on them. I've had that happen to for me. no reason. Yeah, that's a problem. I wonder how many times they actually get somebody with that bullshit because a lot of times they have to just let them go because there's nothing there. Yeah. Like I wonder how many times they is it worth it? Does, how many times the is one the time they actually in the car? Right, like. they actually get somebody. Is it worth it to stop every single black person that fits a description? I wonder. I think, I think we have a different idea of what police work actually is. Like we want to think that it's like law and order, and everybody's like, dun, dun. you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like really, really serious, and they're really like studying people's mug shots and all that, but. In real life, I, I feel like it's more like Scrubs. Like, it's a little bit more comedy. <laughs> They're a little bit more like Barney Five trying to figure it out. Not really. He went uh, that way, and they run this way. Like, that type of... I, th- I don't I know think it's that. more like Deadly Catch, where they just put a big-ass net out there, and, and they look whatever. at you... Oh, he's not the one. Yeah. But they just gonna do that, and but you end up getting hurt yeah. when the rope hits yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? The rope is gonna fuck you up when they capture you. But yeah. then they just let you go. But by that point, your dignity is already a and little bit gone. They feel like on. you're just a sacrificial. You're just a, a, a you know sacrificial. Uh, what is the word? What is the term I'm looking lamb? for? Well, not lamb, but I there's like there's religious. like <laughs> there's a term for people that just get caught up and they're they're just a, a victim of the collateral damage. Kind of like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, 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 it's it's saddening. But you believe in collateral damage, right? Uh, you have to. Yeah, it's it's logical. You're a, you're a dolphin in a fish net, yep. trying to catch fish. Got your ass too. But hey. Yeah, unfortunate. That well, was my analogy. That was, and it came with uh, motions and everything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're a good dolphin. I, I, so I, now we got Dave you. Chappelle and dolphin. You're pretty yeah, good at both I appreciate of those. It. Actually, I wanted to go more with the Barney Fire. I kept hearing dun, 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 the Benny Hill music and shit. You know, <laughs> I don't think you're very good at Barney Fife. No, uh, I don't. Dolphin, like that yes, one. and Dave Chappelle. Yeah. By the Brandon way, how, how was that? What would Dave say? You know what I heard? I don't. I heard. You know, Martin Lawrence did a show here in yeah. Atlanta. JB Smooth, who the I stand think up? is ex- yeah, who he, I think he didn't is, do stand up himself. Yeah, though, right? he did. He did. But JB Smooth was one of the people on the ticket, and. Uh, he got booed. 
What? Yeah, he got booed. And so I want to ask you guys, I want to ask our listeners, do you guys think there's different comedy? Because some of the people that were commenting, I saw the video. I think JB Smooth is funny, but we know that he's on like Curb Your Enthusiasm. Like he has a different, he has more sar- a more satirical type of comedy. Right. And some people were saying, you know, you go to Atlanta, you can't bring, you got to bring tell your mama jokes. It's got to be like in your face funny. Like almost like, in fact, someone said he has to dumb himself down. So do you guys think that different comedy like like re- resonates with different audiences and that people should Absolutely. have to do that? Yeah, yeah. Different, different comedy is for like knowing your audience, knowing the culture of mm-hmm. your audience is important. Yeah. I, I think as a comedian. So, yeah. That's sad. I, I think I think he's. I don't know that, if he's. That's why Gary Owen is successful with black crowds and not white ones. I don't know if he's funny though, JB Smooth. He's not unfunny, but I don't know if he's like stand up funny. On Curb Your Enthusiasm, I like I like his character. So I don't I don't know if I. But would... he kind of JB Smooth kind of has this mush mouth thing going on. I don't I don't know. But he kind of yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what that is. I don't get that. I, I mush can't... mouth. He he does. He has a weird way of talk speaking. But I I don't know if that. Which came first, that or the comedy? Like sometimes people do things because they know it works for their comedy. Yeah. But like, does he speak like that off camera? Is he? I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, he's like, well, the status in the Middle East. He's on um, Real Husbands of Hollywood, which I hope Kevin Hart brings back. I don't know if he's gonna have time, but it's such a funny show. Um, It is funny. (laughs) It's hilarious. Have you guys watched it? Hey. we should have like a marathon. Kevin, am, I, no. am, I, am I on on this? <laughs> no, no, sir. I think okay. we're have going. you watched it though? <laughs> I, have I seen it before? I've seen yes. it before. Yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious, guys. Ooh. Anyway, is it Nelly on that or something? Yeah, it's yeah. funny though because they Nelly's hilarious. Fun. Nelly's hilarious. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nelly's hilarious. Fuck, yes. JB Smooth gets booed, but Nelly would would rock. I I don't Nelly's think he's not funny. I don't bro. think anybody should ever be fucking booed. That's ridiculous. What's wrong yeah. with y'all, man? What is wrong with y'all? Like, you can't take five more minutes of somebody telling jokes that you didn't like? <laughs> the fuck out of here. I, that annoys me that they would do that dude like that. He's a professional. He's yeah. been doing it a lot of years. What gives you the right to boo him? Because you paid $17.99 for your fucking ticket? I know, but I just wondered, because people say about Chris Rock, and Chris Rock is my absolute favorite Say comedian. what? They boo that him? He, they, they, yeah, I saw a lot of people said that he, he wasn't funny, and I'm like, how can Chris Rock not be funny? But a lot of people in Atlanta that went to the show... Did not like it. Hey, Chris Rock was hilarious. What's worse? What's worse? Getting booed or no one laughing? Well, I think that is it, that <laughs> like happens. If, like if, if no one laughs, just, then it turns to boo. <laughs> it turns to a booing situation. But if the entire crowd is just quiet and you just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you gotta quit. Um, you might have to quit hey. comedy. He kept going though. People were booing him and he just kept trying to flip it yeah. and finally he just got off the stage and then Martin came out and acted like it didn't happen. It was hilarious. It sucks. Yeah, but I, I mean, I do. I don't think people should get booed, especially comedians that are proven. Like, Professional comedian, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. You're on. Come on, highest level. Get out of here with that. Yeah. Huh. So, anything else, guys? Is that a, is that all we have for today? Boo. <laughs> That's a whack way to wrap. This hey, look. <laughs> fuck y'all, motherfuckers, man. Boo. <laughs> get him off. Get him off. Get him off the mic. Get him yeah, off the mic. Right. Ricky. I'm gonna I'm I'm do my impersonation of Crystal last week. <laughs> you guys were the soft teeth. I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. What is? Why is soft teeth so bad? I don't. I still don't understand why that's so you, bad. I'm not gonna go back there. I'm not gonna go back to that place. But oh. you can't suggest that perhaps. Really, Kevin? You can't suggest what? I don't understand. That perhaps his fist was not the problem. Maybe it was just her. We teeth don't too know soft. that his fist did anything. Allegedly, but if his have you have you? Oh, let me ask you a question. Have you ever have you ever got into a scuffle with someone? Yes, and didn't know your own strength and maybe hurt them more than you were intending never. to. Never. So you're a superhuman. Never. No, had I just made have mistake. never gotten. Into I am a bam bam. I don't know my own strength. I'm, Nobody does. I just, Nobody. You get angry and your strength. Comparing. I, so what I'm saying is five two woman. If 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 Kevin six eight man. So and only of course, if. There were a situation where someone didn't know their own strength, and there was also brittle teeth involved. I, I'm if not, those I'm two not married for a split second, I'm hey, but I it. can't help it if someone has been eating donuts and their the sugar is just I'm not gingivitis acid away at their teeth. Like, <laughs> I don't know, just that, melting their teeth. Did they floss? 
You know what I'm saying? Were they healthy flossers? They're, I don't want to go back through this again. I'm this not week. saying that domestic hey, violence is good. I think if you have poor dental health, you shouldn't talk shit. There's that part. Because you might. Can you all please uh, chime in? On- please out. Did we just negate the entire thing you did where you were like, you know? I did. I tried, and you guys just redid it I don't know that we did, though. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes people got to... First of all, the state of her teeth should not even come into... Should not even be important. What if... Okay, okay. so who hit Mama D in her mouth? I don't want to do this. (laughs) 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 Who who hit her in her mouth? Guys, Uh, Kevin, who hit her? Please share. Crown Royal. (laughs) Like, share, subscribe. I'm just saying. Uh, I know that there's some. There's actually there was a letter that we had that you didn't read that we that actually went in on me. No, no, just agree with me. That's all. Disagree with me about Cardi B. Defensive and stuff. It's okay. I'm not. Oh, about the world. I did see that the world view. The world view. Yeah. As a as a soldier, as a previous soldier, I do have a different perspective. Soldiers have PTSD syndrome. So what? We get to see the world differently because because you're a little because you see a lot of bad things and you and you, you know. And I actually went back to Cardi, uh, Nicki Minaj's first album, and it's a lot. Pink Friday was better than. than and you know what though? Because Nicki dropped. Because we didn't talk about that. Nicki dropped uh, two new and, songs. Chun Li and no, uh, Chun Li is not horrible. Barbie no, Tings no. is. I'm not happy with it. Chun Li slaps, yo. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chun Li is. is, is, is it's nothing bopping. that I haven't heard before. It sounds like the same Nicki Minaj. I'm. I'm not. Yeah, but the I beat is hard. Both, and her and her flow is hard. Like yeah. and and I also went back and watched some Nicki Minaj interviews. She can conduct Whoa. herself in a fucking interview. I was listening to the Nicki Minaj records and I was like, I won't get this from Cardi. Nope. I won't. Well, I did. I said that to Cardi's myself. That's what Cardi's about. Okay. And I'm I'm actually shouting out Cardi right now. On shout, my her, shout her out. Shout her out. She reposted TLC. She went back there and posted that That's TLC dope. swag. That's dope. That's what I'm talking about. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's see. What she does with that, I won't say nothing else. What do you mean? What she does? She out, yeah. shout out TLC out in the song already. Cool. Yeah, she's cool. Well, I, they I, both could be great. Like they could both be great. We don't have can. to pick. I which saw one. Lady Gaga mm-hmm. shouted out uh, Cardi because I think some footage had surfaced of Cardi doing a Lady Gaga song at right. a talent show in, right. in high school. Hey man, uh, Tiffany Haddish put Barbara Streisand onto the Cardi onto Bodak Yellow. So. That um that song with Kalani has grown on me a whole lot too. Oh, Kalani is just Kalani is the shit. Kalani's Can we talk about her? Way. Like yeah. she is that the song shit. That grown on me a lot. Why is she not like the biggest thing in the world? She, I think she's just waiting her time. I think she's going. She's been going. But yeah, I think she's, she's just you know it's, there's, there's a little time period. The way it should go. There's a little time period between when you blast onto the right. scene and you're actually considered yeah. to get the keys or whatever. You know, yeah. it's going to happen. She had some issues a little while ago. She has like some, she said she had some mental issues going on. She, she, like, she was kind of Kiki Wyatt, that kind of. She tried to like, I think there was a suicide attempt or there was rumors oh, wow. of a suicide yeah. attempt or something, but she's dope. Most artists have, you know, are sensitive. You know what I mean? Except for you. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm a sociopath. I, I, I know that I have some traits. I'll leave it at that. Well, as long as you know, no one's He's not. I don't. I'm not buying this. He's too no beige. He's not a lizard. He just doesn't. A lizard? No. What does that mean? They have no emotions. They oh, just, okay. I, okay. Right. I mean, Lizards have them. I thought they have. What, what, what like, reptiles have emotions? I, I, <laughs> that was the. Now you understand the oh, okay. of that statement. So what mammals like? Do, okay. No. 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 <laughs> that was funny. Like I was like. Emotions or body temperature? Is that which one? <laughs> right. I mean, they're cold. Their body temperature changes right. with whatever they're doing. Yeah, so. like they're cold. Okay. You still here? Kind of. Boo. <laughs> Boo y'all now. Because look how long y'all have kept this going. Boo. <laughs> yeah, right. Everybody's bored now. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And uh, do all the other fun stuff, man. See y'all next time. Bye. Peace. Music Love Life.